cool. Uh, thank you, everyone, for um, sticking around after lunch to hear about some math. Uh, so um, uh, before I start, I'll talk about um, kind of what brought me to Ezoic and why it's a really great place for, uh, for me personally to do data science. Um, prior to starting at Ezoic, I was uh, working at the University of Wisconsin in the School of Medicine doing neuroscience research. And um, it was a really cool job, and we did some really exciting stuff um, and published some papers. Um, but uh, one thing that kind of shook me was kind of was the pace, uh, for one, uh, but really it was the pace of data collection. Um, you know, we, uh, in one of the, uh, sort of my favorite paper that came out of Wisconsin was um, we were studying uh, cardiac arrhythmias and like the molecular cause of, of heart arrhythmias. And um, if you look really closely in the paper, you see that we studied seven heart cells in a dish. And that took like a year to get all that data and to, to sort of make sense of everything that was going on. Um, and um, then when I started talking with Dwayne, uh, the CEO of Ezoic, and he said, well, we have millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of page views uh, that come across every single day. Um, that was something that I got really excited about because I thought, wow, we can actually like do statistics on that. Um, and have some statistical power. So I thought this would be a great place to do data science. Um, so uh, data science is uh, currently sort of a, a buzz term uh, that you've probably all heard. Um, and if you Google, uh, you look at the Google search uh, trends on, uh, on Google, uh, you'll see that it has this sort of exponential growth over the last five years, and it's still going up and up and up and up and up. Um, but if you actually Google what is data science, uh, you don't really get a straightforward answer. I clicked through all the links on the first page trying to find like a concise definition and couldn't really find one. Um, on a couple of the pages, you'll see this, this Venn diagram, this sort of like three-circle Venn diagram where you'll see it's statistics, uh, it's computer science, it's scientific method, and at the intersection of that is data science. Um, but there's really no like actually like concise um, English definition. Um, so uh, I took a, a, a stab at trying to define it and uh, to me, I would say that data science is about uh, maximizing uh, our desired outcome by leveraging the knowledge of our past to reduce uncertainty. So really, to even boil that down even further, it's about making intelligent predictions um, using data. So um, as sort of a, a little simple example, um, I have some data here. Um, and uh, let's just say that this is um, length on the x-axis and weight on the y-axis of a species of whales. We'll say orcas, because um, I made this data up. Um, but you can see that there is a trend with uh, this data, and it's basically the longer that the whales get, uh, the heavier they get. And this can actually be really informative for you, because let's say you're a marine biologist, and you want to know how much a whale weighs for whatever reason. Um, you don't really have the means to weigh the whale. That's a hard thing to do. Uh, but you can actually use some algebra and plot a line of best fit through that data. And what this line does is it actually describes the data uh, very neatly and gives you an equation where you can plug into x, your length, and get out a y value, uh, which is the weight. And so now you can make a reasonable prediction um, using the data uh, about what the actual outcome will be of the weight, something that you don't know. So if you say that it's this long, you just find that spot on the line, and you'll say it's about that heavy. Now, what if you want to do something a little more tricky or a little more complicated, a little less straightforward, um, and something with like a binary outcome, a yes or a no? Um, so to do that, uh, we can... Um, I've made up some data here, too, uh, about um, NFL football teams. And on the x-axis, we have the... Uh, number of wins of a team, and on the y-axis, a yes or a no, whether or not they made the playoffs. And what you can see as the teams win more games, fewer and fewer teams miss the playoffs, and more teams start to make the playoffs. And there's sort of a threshold where you're, you have this sort of 50-50 probability of making the playoffs. And we can actually describe this data. We don't want to use y equals mx plus b, because you'll have, um, you'll get like negative chance of making the playoffs, which isn't true. Um, so we can use a different uh, equation here, which is a, a logistic equation, and you'll get an outcome between 0 and 1, um, and we can plug into x. Um, in this uh, data here, if you plug in 9 wins here, um, and we have the actual equation, uh, you'll get about a 50-50 shot of making the playoffs. So now we, have, we can actually use data science to make predictions of probabilities of an event happening. So... Um, like data science really is a, is a bigger concept, and it's not just simply equations on a chart, uh, which we could all do in algebra. Um, it's, a, it's a bigger thing about machine learning and algorithm development. And we can predict things that are even more complicated, like 
is this a dog? Um, so if I were to describe a dog or try to make an algorithm of like, how do I know if something's a dog, yes or no? Um, I can make a little, um, some, I can describe some features that actually sort of describe a dog. It's an animal, it's a mammal, it barks, and it walks on four legs. So we can actually plug this in uh, to um, an algorithm here, which is called a decision tree. And it's essentially a game of 20 questions where we can say, well, is, is it an animal? Yes. Is it a mammal? Yes. Does it walk on four legs? Yes. Does it bark? Yes. Well, it's a dog. <laughs> At any of these other spots? No, not a dog. And we can stop. Now, this algorithm is not necessarily very robust because there are some, some edge cases where this will fall apart. So let's say we are trying to train the algorithm and uh, describe, you know, like, like this is our example of a dog, um, and we want to know if it's a dog, we are going to find out um, when we run it through the algorithm, it's, it's going to say it's not a dog. So um, we have two choices when this happens. One, we can either rework an algorithm, which takes a lot of time to try and come up with something that's going to capture this as a dog and every other dog and nothing else, or we can collect more data. Because this dog, this is an outlier. This is something that doesn't fit neatly on that, that line of best fit. And so the more data we have, the more we dilute the value of this dog. So I know everyone's wondering, what's the math behind this? <laughs> John is probably wondering, what are the maths? <laughs> so um, there's, there's sort of two steps going on behind the scenes. Uh, the first is uh, we're trying to minimize the error along the way. That's, that was that line of best fit that we saw in the first uh, slide, and uh, there's sort of two things going on. We assign some value for uh, the loss every time that we make an incorrect prediction. We can assign a value for that, and that's called a loss function. And we just take the minimum of the total loss function from the previous step to the current step. And then uh, simultaneously, we're trying to maximize the probability of that desired outcome, whatever it is we want to predict, like if it's a dog or if we make the playoffs or whatever that, that event is. Um, and if you're paying close attention, you may notice that equation is pretty much the same from the, the logistic equation um, in the first, uh, on that first slide. So um, now to take it from the less theoretical and into the more um, domain-specific uh, case, use case here, um, you're probably wondering, so like, where should I place ads? Um, so uh, over the weekend when I was uh, making this slideshow, uh, I was doing it in our coffee shop and um, I was on my laptop, and I was using Chrome. It was Saturday. It was 10 a.m. I was tethering on my cell phone because they didn't have Wi-Fi for some reason. Um, I was here in La Jolla. Um, and actually, you know, when I made that request uh, to this web page, uh, I went to BrightHub, um, they do a lot even more about me. And so we can actually use that information and build out a decision tree. And in the end, what we're all worried about is how am I going to maximize my earnings? And so uh, the, the uh, server knew that I was in the United States. It was Saturday, it was 10 a.m., a cellular tethering, and um, are we going to get earnings? So how important is this to do for your website? Well, um, this is an example of uh, one of our, um, one of the sites on our platform that kind of came across my radar uh, recently. And uh, what you can see here in this, uh, it, these are page views uh, per day. And what you can see are these big spikes and these big troughs on the weekend. And uh, it turns out that this is actually an educational website. And so you have these big spikes during the week, and these troughs during the weekend, um, and you have this really big trough in the summer. Uh, not a lot of traffic in the summer, but it, it grows again during the school year. And so um, these decision trees start to become really in, uh, important uh, because I would bet my next paycheck that these people that are coming to the website um, on a Thursday night at 1 in the morning are very, 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 very different from these people coming on a weekend in the summer. Um, these are probably the teachers or just the really big nerds, and these are me. <laughs> and these are the people um, who are just trying to get their homework assignment done for the next morning. They want the answer, they want it quickly, and they just they don't really care about the content. So we need to have a decision tree or some algorithm that can differentiate between these users to sort of maximize their desired outcome. Um, so in this case, this is I'm just speculating here, um, kind of using intuition, um, I would be worried about bounce in that situation. I'd be worried that the person coming at 1 in the morning on a Thursday night like, doesn't care about the content, doesn't care about anything, just wants the answer, wants it fast, wants to go to bed. Um, so I would, you know, maybe if you throw um, you know, the maximum number of ads you can get on the page to that user, 
um, they're going to be really sensitive to the load time. They're going to have a hard time finding the content. They're going to leave. Um, so if you plug through this uh, decision tree, um, you want to maximize your desired outcome, whether or not uh, that user is going to bounce or if they're actually going to stay on the time on site, give you some time on site and more page views. So um, something exciting that we're uh, working on uh, at Ezoic and um, something a little more um, concrete of an example uh, is um, this was an experiment that I'm running um, that is, let's, we can uh, kind of boil it down and say it's an A-B test. Um, and here on the y-axis, uh, we have um, different domains. We're running this test on a bunch of different domains. Um, those domains that we, um, John mentioned, are um, our internal, our owned sites. Um, so we're not running it on anyone's pages that are. Um, <laughs> we try it out first on our own stuff before we before we mess with yours. Um, we make sure it works. So, um, and here on the the y or on the x-axis, I apologize, is um, ad positions. So. Um, on certain domains, we can see that um, here, these two, I'll just get up here and point, uh, these two positions jumped out as really, really interesting. Um, because if users liked an ad in this position, the, let's say the red ad, they also liked the red ad in this position. And the reverse is true. If they liked the blue ad in this position, they liked the blue ad in that position. And so that held up across all of the domains. So now this becomes a really interesting um, data science problem because now we know some user behavior. And we have some sites where we haven't uh, collected enough data to actually be able to predict, like on this domain, um, we don't know yes or no, do they like the red or do they like the blue? But what we do know is that we have um, history across other domains where we say, well, they like blue here or they should like blue there. Um, so we can actually use the maths. Um, <laughs> And uh, plug into, uh, this is a cosine similarity. And what we do here is um, basically treat this as, uh, treat each of these data points as vectors. And we take them into multi-dimensional space and we expand the problem and um, basically take a similarity score between these two vectors, which is just a dot product. If anyone did um, like multivariate calculus, you may remember that. Uh, and we take the dot product between the two and we can calculate a similarity score. If they're going in the same direction, they're similar. If they're going in the opposite direction, they're the opposite. If they're going in, you know, perpendicular to each other, they have no correlation together. And you calculate, rank those similarity scores, and uh, can make a prediction about well, uh, they like blue here, so they'll probably like blue here. This is just basically um, to distill down a really complicated business. This is how Netflix works. So uh, to leave you with um, data science and using data for to your advantage, um, if I could leave you with three things about it, uh, one would be. Collect your data across as many variables as possible uh, because you never know where the significance may be. Uh, it is there in your data, and the more data you collect, the more you will learn. Uh, two, uh, always work on minimizing your error. Uh, pay attention to your error because you never know if that's a dog on two legs or a dog on four legs. And if you start paying attention to that dog on two legs, that one outlier, then your whole, all of your data is going to be skewed. All of your algorithms are going to be skewed and your predictions will be incorrect. Um, and lastly, you know, keep your eyes on the prize and always remember what it is you're trying to optimize for and what it is that you are trying to get out of this. Um, so thank you very much. And uh, got it.